Hey guys, my name's Salty Sam. Today we're going to be playing a game called Doki Doki Literature Club. Now don't be afraid. I know why you clicked on this video. You want them sweet, succulent anime titties. Well, as all of you know, Steam's quality has dropped recently. And filth like this can get on the internet. So let's begin. Our name's going to be Salty. Hey! I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know the kind of friend you'll never see yourself making today. But it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this. But starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently. And I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ha! Ah, ha! Ha! I overslept again, but I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh, you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Salty, hence the name. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine, but you did wait for me after all. You're looking for the anime titties. She's pretty flat as a board. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Salty, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm really not interested in joining any of your clubs. I haven't been looking either. Ah, uh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did, in one of my many conversations, where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sayori so likes to worry a little bit too much about me. When I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I work. Worry that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Shut up, Sayori. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. That's why I called you a neat. And I know you're happy now, but I'll die at the thought of you becoming a neat, oh well, in a few years because you're not used to, to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. Where is she? I'll look at a few clubs if I make if it makes you happy. I'm gonna join the ROTC and kick some ass. No promises though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess. I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? Push over. More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to. Relent. Uh, more than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worrying so much about me makes me want to ease her mind a, li ease a little bit. Even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. The school day is an ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. We can go get Subway. That's a club. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. Turkey club. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello. Sayori. Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. 
I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even more worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know. Know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Sayori. Yeah! There's no way I'm going to your club. Eh, meanie. Sayori is vice president. Vice president of the Vic Literature Club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much, anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. Eh <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to have planned it all out. Oh, she planned this. I let out a long sigh. <sighs> Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? I hope it's red velvet. Yay, let's go! And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly followed Sayori around the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visited, being generally used for third year classes and activity. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glanced around the room. Girl one. Welcome to the literature club. It's a pleasure to meet you. Sayori, Sayori always says nice things about you. Says that you bought a boy. Way to kill the atmosphere. He stinks of man. Ah, salty. What a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. <sighs> Look at all my anime eyes. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. What are you looking at? She's one of those. If you want to say something, say it. You're a Sundare. Sasari, so Sundare. Natsuki. Huh. The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year and she is probably way too young for our hero. No, no. Calm yourself. She is also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can't just ignore her when she gets moody. Oh, you can't just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says the, that quietly in my ear, then turns back toward the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. D -d Don't say things like that. Yuri, who apparent who appears, yeah. Who appears com comparably more mature and timid seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Oh, oh, it's me. Oh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Salty. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we very talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, perky. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me, so Jenny feels like a little... Y y you too, Monica. Monica! <laughs> Come, sit down, Salty. We made room for you at the table, so you can sit next to me or Monica. 
I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been wired. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there is one space next to Monica and the space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walked over to the corner of the room where Natsuki wraps, grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki, pr Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Oh, wow! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little kittens. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, just hurry and take one, jeez. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica, and I follow. It's delicious. Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I took the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Eat the head. Go for the head. It worked for Thanos. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking, gl sneaking glance is in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it her herself, and I hope this isn't like that anime where the girl cooks the cookies with her own vaginal fluids. That was a really messed up anime. Don't watch it, kids, unless you're into that crap. In which case, still don't watch it. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thinking me? It's not like I like you or anything. Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Only every freaking anime in the face of the freaking planet. Me them for you or anything. Uh, I thought you technically did. Sayori said, well, maybe. But not, for, you know, baka. All right, all right. I gave, on, gave up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismissed the conversation. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. I hope it's apple tea. I love apple tea. She carefully placed the teacup in front of me, of each of us, before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry. The teacher gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimid intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Are you impressed? Th that's not. Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. While tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least you, at least, uh, but I at least enjoy tea. My goodness, I cannot get words out today. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow and then smiles at me. Oh, that's so furry. She's going after my man. So what made you consider the literature club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori and that I'm after her fluffy bunnies. Well... I haven't joined any club yet, and Sayori seems really happy here, so that's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? We're not going to kidnap you or anything. <laughs> that would be weird <laughs> and illegal, <laughs> and they will never find you. As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. <laughs> Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You can probably be a board member for any of these major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? 
No, you want to debate about it? Uh, well, you know, to be honest, I can't stand all this politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. Yeah, that's called a debate club. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica. All right. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in this club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting all their effort into starting something brand new. This is the first video of my channel. Please like and subscribe. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You like me, don't you? <laughs> like, favor, and subscribe. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new club member joining. Though I still, re still re don't really know if I can keep up their level of enthusiasm about literature. So salty. What kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. He's in the manga. I'm in the manga. Let's make babies. Looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking about after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. I kind of take her as kind of a Edgar Allan Poe, all those dark Lovecraft people things. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her fingers. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. Okay, I like those too. The love of creativity and craft is written behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Did you catch the end of Game of Thrones? A lot of people hate it. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. Uh, uh. I'm the same way. But you know, I like a lot of things. Like novels, and short novels, and novellas. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse, my, immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can be, can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Have you read that one book? Oh, the green eggs and ham. Oh, it made me so wet. <laughs> anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a horror book once, never slept again. I desperately grasped something I couldn't relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ah, uh, I hate horror. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes darted over to me for a split second. Never mind. 
That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? W what? What gives you that idea? The fact you changed your face. You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. You looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! And give that back. Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems. Everything you do is just cute as you are. Sayori sidles up behind Natsuki and puts her hand on her shoulders. I'm not cute. I'm delicious. Uh, what? what? <laughs> Natsuki, you write your own poems. Oh, uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, uh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Aw, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. What? Natsuki and Yuri look quiz quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we will share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um... Yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Salty? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on. There's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Which ones of you are single? Now we're back to the original topic of me joining the club. I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori must have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um, I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but, I'm sorry, I thought. Ha. Huh. Salty. You, you all are gonna gang up on you, boy. I'm defenseless against these girls with their pouty eyes and their perky self-esteem. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. <gasps> one by one, the girls' eyes light up. That was definitely not one by one. That was all together, like some sort of robotic form. Yes! I'm so happy! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey, hey. You really did scare me for a moment. It was like my horror novels. Oh, it was so great. If you really just came here for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think that we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Salty, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress this class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Oh my god. I'm oh gonna kill my mom. Oh. I'm gonna save. I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey Salty, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Sayori and I never walked home together anymore, but she always stayed at after school for clubs. 
Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us despite depart the classroom and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, not Suki, which if you go after her, yeah, Chris Hansen's gonna have a word with you. Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to come closer to one of these girls. All right, I just need to make the most of my circumstances. I'm sure a good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something's good might happen when, who, with whomever likes your poem the most. Huh, Monica isn't one of them. Sayori, Natsuki, and Yuri. Kitty would probably get Natsuki. I don't think we're going to go for Natsuki. I'm going to go with Sayori. Let's see, she's kind of loud. Yep. Um... Cool, silly? Okay. <laughs> okay, then let's do this. Uh, rain, uh, whoa. I thought that would be Yuri, but okay. Um, what the hell are you into, girl? <laughs> doki doki. <laughs> okay. I have no idea what kind of freaking poem I'm writing here. I'm just putting words and people are jumping. Uh, let's get the climax. Oh, uh, that. She liked that. Mm, her? Okay, so Yuri is a little bit complicated or something. Uncanny. Okay. Uh, warm. Okay. I think she, like, resonates with emotion. Dying is an emotion. Let's see. Uh, that's slow. Okay. That's creepy. Embrace. Okay. Nope. I think kiss is a little bit too... Sadness. Childhood. Yeah, because we have a history together. Papa. Okay. I think we got Sayori. Hi again, Salty. Glad to see you didn't run away from us. <laughs> uh, but no, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I... I bah. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Salty. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. I hope you don't leave like my dad left. And I hope my mom doesn't disappear like she did when she died and nobody found her. She's not buried under a bridge. What would make you think that? Making you dive head first into literature. Okay. Making you dive head first into literature when you're not accustomed to it? Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. He's a boy. He'll get me. Sayori told me you you don't ever want to join any club this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. Like, are you trying to get on us? That's gross. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you seriously have a big mouth for someone who kept her manga collection in the club room. Blah, 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 blah. Matsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Salty always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. I burped. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so freaking messy, it's distracting. 
And you almost set your house on fire once. <laughs> Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I'm not jealous. I might be a little jealous. How come you and Salty can become... Well, how come you and Salty can become good friends too? Aw, Sayori. You rent me out, you little hoe. Um, Sayori. Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you some, something today, you know? Wait, Sayori! Uh, me? Uh, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. It's not the severed head of my mom. That would be weird on the first day. What is it? Never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Oh, that was Yuri. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Oh, what do I do? I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to res rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. All right. Well, here. Here he reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. It's the Necronomicon. Oh, I hope you love it. I don't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it shouldn't keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out books she thinks I like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Mona to kick off some sort of schedule activity for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, it's one of those clubs where you all can just do whatever the hell you want. Sayori and Monica are keeping a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is also oh, is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she's waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slump down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri, some of the book Yuri gave me. But I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in, in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably re we're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone that literature is all about. The problem is the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. You could always dress up in little cute maid cat girl outfits like they do in the animes. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way to sh of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm... That doesn't solve the problem, though. Well, what do you mean? If we come up with the most fun, even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know. And after they come, we can do the thing to. Sp bleh. And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori is talking, taking this really seriously. It's weird to hear her deliberately like this. Hmm, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? Wh what kind? Uh, well, I guess we could. Cupcakes! Ah, uh, good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Cupcakes it is, then. I'm hungry. 
Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. Emi and Sayori is still her usual self. But there lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things that make things and make them come to life. Ah, she's so cute. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Whoa. Oh, whoa. I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? That'd be awesome. You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in the club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know. Okay, yeah. Don't be my mom. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. That's a little creepy. Eh <laughs> It's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh. Not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's confidential. It's a secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh? Sayori glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? I'm the literature club. You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Ah. Uh, I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Dang, dude. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get, right? I won't fall for that. That's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And that's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even care to keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori? Okay, now you're being her daddy. You're not the kind of daddy that you're supposed to be. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh, that's super mean. That's kind of douchey. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer, blazer from the bottom. You're going up the, to the titties follow that trail. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Eh, this is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does this kind of things. Eh, don't say that. You make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Just best buddies. Ah, uh, I guess. Hey, be careful. The mutt might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Dude, your hands are too close. You are gonna get in trouble with the present principal. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> It did when I bought it. You ate too many cupcakes. Sigh. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. Why are you smi What are you smiling about? It moves my. It <laughs> means my boobs got bigger again. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so. Why does it feel strange to say Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Ooh. It's not worth it at all. 
Sayori hastily unbuttoned her blazer once more. Phew. That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out to tw and twists around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that? Actually, it'd probably be the opposite. And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because. If I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would, anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all those embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Why don't I just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier? Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. Eh, <laughs> eh. I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so. So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Ah, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell you with to, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poem we wrote now? Yay! Salty, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, it's uh, a jumbled piece of crap. Yeah, same. I found it sound enthusiastic, but Yori Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah, I just threw a bunch of words together. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I'd never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri's reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I write my poem to first? Oh, show it. Uh, I mean, we're going for Sayori. Let's do Monica. I should start with Monica. Yesterday, she seemed eager to read my poem, and I want her, and I want her to know I'm putting an effort. Hey, Salty. Having a good time so far? Oh yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything. If you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things, or new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Salty. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's the sort of barrier that we all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Ah, so Sayori would like it. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sort of things in common. Ah, well. We might be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm? They say opposites attract. Well, that might be the case, but maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you, it sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show, even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? Ah, uh, I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayori's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I could tell that she likes exploiting life emotions. Yay, we called it. Like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. That's why I'm at this club. I'm more experiment with two chicks. Although, if I want to disappoint two, pe two people at the same time, 
I take my parents out to dinner. Ow. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. I could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I love to see you try new things. That's the Okay. That's the best way to find a new kind of style that suits you. Gotta get that head out of my good. Everyone else might be a little bit biased toward their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. She's one of those. She's like, oh, I'm not perfect. Well, that ca that because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's eat it then. Hole in the wall. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the sparkle protrudes? A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas, already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he on the other side was looking in. What the hell? That kind of reminds me of like that uh, Silent Hill, the room, like with the hole in the wall and you see the people and stuff. Okay, um, that's different. All right. So what do you think? I think you play too much Silent Hill. Hmm, it's very freeform if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Ah, uh, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gone pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What's with the inspira inspiration behind this one? Ah, uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I'm s I had some kind of epiphany, epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany. Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that, but it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something deep down on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll get a big, dark puddle of ink. So just move your hands and go with the flow. I think Stephen King said something like that too. I think he said just write something down. You know, it might be crap, but you can go back later and make it not crap as much. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay. Oh, Monica's pretty deep. I say let's go with Sayori. Oh my goodness. This is so good, Salty. Eh? I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. Sayori. You must be seriously overreacting. My goodness, I'm burping all that. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I had no idea what I like either. Ah, jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh, well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, 
It's not just a poem. It's a salty poem. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I could feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. She likes you, dude. She wants to get, get down, get busy. Yeah, I'm really happy, Jess, that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the classroom. Oh, uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Salty. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people? That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, he's after your bosoms. I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all? Yeah. I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That's what that will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold on hold you to that then. Yay! Now you read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. Uh-huh. We'll see about that. Should I do it in her voice? Nah, just mine. Dear Sunshine, The way you glow through my mind in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me, kissing my whole forehead to help me out of bed, making me uh, rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to what? what uh, are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Sayori. This is just a guess, but... <laughs> did you wait until the morning to write this? No? Just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still try my best. Ah, uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or should I put it... It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. Eh <laughs> That was so much fun. Monica's the best. Ah, uh, yeah. The next time, I won't forget. I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Oh, let's do Yuri. Hmm. She don't like it. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes more than, than enough time for her to finish reading. Um. Oh, sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Um, it's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I, I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess they might be after reading through it. Ah, uh, so it's that bad. No. Did I just raise my voice? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we haven't really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a, a while to get used to the new people. It's fine. I really didn't know this. What were you saying? Right, um, it's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. I haven't been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two, th two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. So, okay, the end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her trance of thought, it is as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. I mean, technically all I did was 
put a bunch of frickin' words together, so. <laughs> of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. I think, like, we only got here, like, two or three words she liked. Just not finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying a new thing. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little biased, though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that behind their backs. It's... Kind of bitchy. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if there's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't that supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate breath. The uh, the tendrils of my hair illuminate breath. The amber glow, bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining street light to have with, uh, withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue, green hue of the few. Future? I think. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. I always had trouble reading cursive. Always. I'm sorry. I have such terrible handwriting. Yeah. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. Yeah, it was. But I took you... But it took you a long time to read. That's a lot to process. Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Ugh. That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Oh, wait, that's me. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Oh, great. That's gonna be a hell to get through. Not at all. I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I want to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, this story isn't about a ghost at all, Salty. Really? It's surely not about the ghost of my mom. I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poems often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experience on their works. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of my poem is only being symbiotically compared to a ghost, lingering in our last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just that rem remember that it won't be long before we pick up on these things too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Huh, we only have Natsuki left. I wonder, should I be balancing out the girl's needs more with my poems? Because I kind of only favored Sayori and a little bit of Natsuki. Unintentionally. Hmm. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. I just didn't invoke any emotion. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. So well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. 
Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Well, they can also fall off and die. Yeah. I told you that you weren't like, gonna like it. I like it. Yeah, it's actually pretty cute. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, you're a guy for once. Because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But is it the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Wait, wait, that's what you were getting at? So, oh, so other creatures can do things, but you feel as though you can try, but you're gonna fail. So you have self-esteem issues, which is why you are aggressive. Yeah, I understand. But the other thing about simply writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, I set up a rhyme at the end, but then maybe it's all flat, 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 fall flat on purpose. You're pretty flat. It helps bring up the feelings in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what I mean to be, what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with the last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but Natsuki is feeling proud, then I, then I won't take that away from her. Yay! Phew! I think we should probably save. Phew! I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. Guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly express sheets of paper sharing their respective poems. Oh, they're gonna despise each other because they're very polar opposites. She's very like, my goodness, I don't even know. And she's very cutesy and very simple, and she's very complex. That's probably how you can put it together. As they read in tandem, I watch each other, each other's expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Yur meanwhile, Yuro, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Uh, uh, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is, uh, cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feelings of giving up. How could that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh. You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks. But it really doesn't come out nice at all. Um. Well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm. If, it, if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Uh, you're in a literature club. Nobody's gonna really just give it to you. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Salty did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions on my own. Like, shove it up your butt. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer. But I spent a long time establishing my writing style. Yeah, Monica needs to, like, get these two to actually realize that they're in a literature club and that people are going to have suggestions and they might want to take them up on their suggestions. <sighs> I don't expect it to change anytime soon unless, of course, I come ac across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. 
<laughs> and salty like my poem too, you know. He even told me he was inspired by it. Mitsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh? That's not what I... Ugh, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just just that Salty appreciated my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh. And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? I think all she did was call me an idiot. Are you that full of yourself? No. I was full of myself. I would throw up because I can't eat people. I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. You! Um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? It wasn't the one with booze magically grew a size bigger as soon as Salty started showing up. <gasps> Natsuki! Uh, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Man. Did I cause this because I didn't favor, like, man, this poem actually might have a, a reason in this game. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Salty! She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. You don't need my help to look bad. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate the simple writing is more effective. And this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Salty. Wait! There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessary limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Salty? You understand what it's like to be a waste? Um... Well... How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Ah... Oh. Okay, then. I mean, I'm, I'm all for Sayori. Help me, Sayori. Natsuki. Natsuki glares at me, drawing up at any words I had in my mouth. But Natsuki glares at me, drawing up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turn to Yuri. Yuri. But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori. Eh? Yeah? Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel, friend feel like this? Salty. Well, that's her problem. That isn't about her. Uh, I agree. It's a fear for others to inter interject their own feelings in our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a suck-up jerk she's being. She would never... It's your immaturity that made her upset in the first place. Excuse me. Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why. Exactly why nobody likes you. Stop! Natsuki. Yuri. You guys are my best friends. Or um, are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people. I love them because of their differences. You, the on the uh, sundere, and you, the quiet girl. I don't know what that's called in Japanese. Natsuki's poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? B because there's a boy. Look what the boy is. Well... Also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. Big and beautiful. <laughs> Sayori! 
Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. Oh, make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things. But I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that kind of embarrass... As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. <laughs> nah, it's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see, see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. That seemed really... Foreshadowy. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knot. Seems like even though I'm kind of going for more for Sayori, the main character is more into Monica, but you can't really do anything to get Monica to, uh, I don't know, show her love for you or whatever. Such a genuinely person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get a chance to talk to her a little more. Yeah, like that, you know? It's like, I want, uh, I want Monica to be kind of the center of the attention. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. I got caught with big, lumptious, beautiful boobs. It was alright. Well, mostly. Salty, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Yeah, everyone kind of hang out their dirty laundry in front of me. Awesome. In the case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Maybe you'll learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself. I did learn a little more about the kind of poems everyone liked. But then look, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I know to myself with a newfound determination. Ah, it's kind of putting in that whole, um, what's it called? Can't give you a tutorial on how to get the girls to like you. Salty. Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Hee <laughs> hee. Sayori beams at me. It surely has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori. About what happened earlier. Eh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've ever seen a fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I kind of want to get in bed with them. You know what I'm saying? Except the underage one. Not her. Not her. I just want your opinion after that, all. I can see why you're making a good friends with you. Phew. You know, Salty. It's nice that I got to spend some time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get gets along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is gonna be so much fun. Hi. Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but sometimes you want to get some, you know, some of that action. Does it really need to stop there? We just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. Man, you pat her on the shoulder just a couple of hours ago. You were buttoning up her shirt. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. <sighs> Next poem. So guys, I think that's going to be good for this episode. Hope you all enjoy this and you come back for the next. Um, hopefully my horrible voice acting isn't too terrible. So, see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.